Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art Chat. I'm Linda Riesenberg Fissler, and I'm one of the hosts of the show, um, which brings us to probably another announcement that we're going to have later on in the podcast. Um, but joining me today is Sherry Hot. Uh, Sherry, you go Sherry Don Haas now, right? Okay, Sherry yes. Don. <laughs> okay, Sherry Don Haas. Um, Sherry and I met, oh gosh, a long time ago when Sherry worked for Interweave and um, the Artist Magazine. And uh, Sherry uh, brought Art Chat in, if I remember correctly, with Jamie Markle to uh, be with Interweave. Uh, so we worked, we called it the Artist Network, actually. Um, it was part of the Artist Network and we did chats with everybody. And uh, that was a lot of fun back there working with you. Since then, Sherry and I have gone on many different paths of creativity. Uh, one is Sherry and I share a mutual love of writing and, um, I, and she also danced and maybe we'll dance in the future again if I can, can get her motivated, I guess. <laughs> And then um, also Sherry works for Streamline, um, and I'll have her tell, uh, talk a little bit about her responsibilities there. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, and she's, she's going to be teaching yoga. That's going to happen after in January in 2021. So very busy lady. So thank you so much for joining us, Sherry. And we'll get into the meat and bones of everything later. But um, yeah, so did I miss anything? I was like, no, you're so busy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, I think you got enough of it. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about, um, well, just your day and your work with Streamline and Eric mm -hmm. and, um, you know, how you fit in yoga and how you fit in your writing. Just a, a little bit about that. Let's start there. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to start. Um, my day these days, it actually starts with um, meditation. Oh, nice. Uh, first thing. Yeah. And that's how I squeeze in my yoga practice every day. Um, almost no matter what, even if it's just five minutes, but typically I do about a 20 minute meditation. And then sometimes I, I go into my physical yoga practice and then I take care of my dogs and my chickens and my kids and I get my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then I sit down and I start working for um, for Streamline Publishing, which is uh, my main my main gig right now. I love it. I work for Eric Rhodes and at Streamline, I'm the online editor for Plain Air Today, which is for Plain Air Magazine. And working with Kelly Kane, who oh, okay. you probably remember from F and W. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, that's just amazing. And then I also work with Peter Trippy for Fine Art Today. That's the newsletter for Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine. And then we also launched a brand called Realism today that's dedicated to contemporary realism and art. So that's my, that's my main job is to manage all the newsletters and the websites and then the online events um, I'm involved with in different, different capacities. So um, we have Watercolor Live coming up, which is an online art conference, which I think ties into the concept of community that oh, we'll be yeah. talking about. So that's why I mentioned that here. Um, once I get my, all of my work work done <laughs> for the day, um, I kind of switch gears and I actually, I already did this this morning. Like I keep a little note and it has like my top priority things that I, like, I have to get this done for work. It's, right. it's light right now, but I'm going to have to. <laughs> and then I have, um, like my personal things that I want to get done for the day. So, you know, I just realized I'm holding this up and people aren't going to see it, but I keep like a little <laughs> list and I, I tell myself, okay, I'm going to work on my novel draft for half an hour today, or I'm going to resolve one issue that I know what is within it or something like that. And, um, and that's just, that's sort of how I get through each day and, 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 and I'm able to tie it all together, you know? Right. Yeah. That, I mean, it's, it's, I got away from doing lists and it's probably one of the reasons why I don't, <laughs> I get things done. Cause at the end of the day, I sit there and go, what did I do today? You know? And, and it's like, how did I do that? You know? But there is a lot of um, motivation and, and procrastination. So I'm going to actually um, change a little bit of the order because I'm so excited to, to announce this. So what I'm going to do, Sherry, since I went through this in the green room with you, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the community first, and then that way we don't have to worry about tripping over it. <laughs> okay, so um, basically we have this, the, the big announcement for this podcast is we are forming, Sherry and I are forming um, 
a new community called Art Shack Community. And um, Sherry is going to be joining me on the podcast at least once a month. Um, we'll, we're going to see how this goes. If it if she finds room in her schedule and I find room in my schedule to do a second podcast, that's great. If not, you may just end up with me. So we're, we're leaving this very loose and very fun, but I think Sherry and I will hopefully hold each other, oh gosh, there's the A word, accountable <laughs> um, for making this community really something that a lot of artists, and when I say artists, I mean creatives um, to join. So if you write, if you paint, if you dance, if you, um, I don't do yoga, if you just wanna be with creatives, um, I, we encourage you to join the Facebook group. And to do that, what you need to do is actually send me, Linda, an email, and I'll put that up on the screen. But it's um, real easy to remember now, lfissler at lindafissler.com. And then, and tell me what your Facebook handle is, and I can add you to the group. Or you can send me a message on Facebook if that's even easier. So um, the community, what we were setting up with the community and what we'll talk about more as we talk through this is uh, really having a place for creatives to come and be motivated and inspired and um, be social. Uh, like I told Sherry in the green room, no political posts, no posts outside of being creative, <laughs> okay? So, uh, and if something happens that's not the right post, I'll either A, take it down, and my gosh, if it's a political post, poof, out the door. <laughs> so, don't go there. <laughs> so, and it's just the rules for this group, and you can post whatever you want on your, <laughs> your area, but for us, we're just going to focus on creativity and helping motivate folks. So I'm going to give Cherry a chance to jump in. So anything you want to add to our little community? Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You know, I'm really looking forward to it because I think that it's going to be a great opportunity for creatives just to come together and share our challenges, share our successes, yeah. and just support each other in, in a way that, that we need right now. So thank you for, for coming up with the idea and, and putting this together and inviting me to be a part of it. Yeah, well, I'm glad you are, because like I said, I think we've always held each other accountable before. And like I said, I, I don't like that word, but we always tended to get to a spot and it would be like, oh, I'm so glad I talked to you. <laughs> you know? And we used yeah. to meet for lunch when I lived in uh, Ohio and you were working in, um, down with FNW. I said interweave before, I guess that was the wrong thing to say, I apologize. But yeah, for FNW. Um, and we used to meet for lunch and we always left both Sherry and I always left like recharged and invigorated about going back and getting some things done. Um, so when I started thinking about doing this group, it's like, well, you know, who, who else can I ask to join in the group? And it was like, oh, I need to ask Sherry because we were always good <laughs> about doing that. So, uh, and she was very responsive, uh, responsive to that. So I thank you for that. And um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, kind of a downer subject, if you will, but where this came out of. The last year, 2020 has been really, really hard for I think a lot of creatives and everyone else, but especially creatives, because even though we sit in studios with a lot of alone time, we base a lot of our creativity on the interactions that we have outside of that studio. So inspiration for doing something comes for a must looking outward and then we pull that inward and cr make the creation do do what it, what it, whether it's a painting or an interpretive dance or uh, a paragraph or a chapter in our writing a, a poem anything you know that's where we kind of draw this and that that whole ability to be in a social arena outside of social media face to face and or um, just phone on phone or, or Zoom now, since that's a big thing. But, you know, it was, it was, it's really kind of dropped off. And I know there's a meme that's out on Facebook that says, you know, me before the pandemic, me after the pandemic, and it's a person sitting there painting in their studio. And I'm saying, well, that's not really true, though. I think it's had a really bad effect on a lot of creative folks. And I, for me personally, have seen my motivation to do things starting to drop. Um, it's just, you know, when you're facing every day, not having that interaction and being coming so isolated, it's, it's very hard 
to motivate yourself and inspire yourself to go out and and create something. So at least for me. So Sherry, how about you? What do you see that too? Yeah, I definitely see that. Um, you know, and I agree with everything that you just said. And, you know, I think what I'd like to say is that it's important to, to just recognize that. Mm -hmm. And this is like, this is where my yoga practice comes into what I do is um, just recognizing that we're in a difficult time and we're gonna have moments where we don't feel like being creative or we don't know how to be creative. Um, and just sort of recognize that it's just a dip and it's like a dip of the wave, you know, and that we know we're gonna be at the top of the wave again, like whatever that means for us. Maybe it means that two hours from now, we're gonna get a great idea and be super stoked about creating something new mm -hmm. or starting a project or finishing a project. But right now you're just in the dip. Mm -hmm. And it's, <laughs> I think that once we recognize that it makes it easier to just get through that dip mm -hmm. and just do what you have to do to get through it. So for me, honestly, like sometimes I just have to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm the person that's always envious of somebody who can take a nap because I can't nap. <laughs> <laughs> probably why I have dark circles under my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned how. <laughs> and so that's, you know, when I, when I feel that, that dip, I'm just like, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to lay down. I'm going to rest my mind. I'm going to rest my body. And then I'm going to wake up, drink some water, step outside for a minute, whatever it is, or just come back to that list that I started in the morning and say, okay, like I have to get this done. Mm. And it doesn't matter how I feel. It has to get done. And um, I think that as creatives, if we can just sort of note how we're feeling in that moment, whether it's a rough moment or an awesome moment, then it just helps us get toward all those awesome moments that we know are waiting for us. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And but I, I when you were talking, I was like, oh, yeah, remember to say this. And <laughs> that just went out of my mind. So I'm sure it'll come back as we talk a little <laughs> bit more. But it's just, you know, so the community itself, what um, Sherry and I are, are hoping it becomes is a place, a very, very safe place where creatives can go talk about their projects, um, find some support system within that and, um, you know, help us motivate us, keep us motivated, help us to become a little bit more social. Um, and then there, there are a couple options which we'll get into. The, the first option for joining the Art Chat community is that Facebook social media group. And um, the second option is some semi-personal one-on-one participation via Zoom um, with a small charge so that you remain committed to joining us, um, not out of this world charge. And depending on um, how many people and uh, participants we get, there's a limit on that. Um, so those people will be instructed to go to um, my Patreon page and sign up at the $5 level. And then that gets us into personal coaching um, with me uh, on your projects. So again, um, just so you know, Sherry and I both do a number of different things. Oh, I know what I wanted to say now. It came back. I told you it would come back. So <laughs> um, one of the things that I did is to become more, to motivate myself more was I asked Tom to buy me some watercolor markers for Christmas. And I thought, well, if I take a different medium and I start playing with that, hopefully I'll get more creative and I'll start, you know, being up in my studio a little bit more. And then that'll take me as I get frustrated with doing these watercolor markets back to um, oils. So <laughs> painting with oils, because that's where I've been training for the last 25 years. So and, and then I, I have my whole book. So book five is sitting on the shelf right now. I mean, it's like, I don't even know where I am with my characters anymore. So I have to get back into that as well. And I've lost a lot of motivation for that. Um, so yeah, so with the watercolor markers, I just started playing with them. There was no pressure of getting something out there. And I'm trying to teach myself this. And lo and behold, up in my 
my newsfeed pops the watercolor instruction series that Streamline's putting out that I saw you share. So let's um, let's give Eric a few <laughs> a few minutes and, and Streamline a few minutes of uh, marketing time here. And cool. if you want to talk a little bit about that watercolor um, instructional series that you got coming out, just in case we we hit on some watercolor folks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, thanks, Linda. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy to talk about it. Um, it's Watercolor Live is the name of it. And the website is watercolorlive.com. And it's coming up at the end of January. And what it is, is they have like, it's like the world's top watercolor artists coming together. And what we do is we have them, um, some of them are pre-recording their painting demonstrations. And when that happens, they're actually live in the chat with us. So as we're watching them demonstrate, they're interacting with everyone. So you can ask oh, them wow. questions, you ask them whatever you want, you know, about their painting process and they're right there to answer. And then some of them are actually painting live on camera. And for those people can still ask questions. And we have someone like talking to the artist and saying, okay, so-and-so asked this, or they, or we follow up with them later and find out the answers. And then in between the demonstrations, we open it up into a Zoom where we have like hundreds of people getting together in a Zoom and we break them out into little rooms so you can actually get to know some of the other participants. Right. Um, we've seen like so many amazing things come from this. It's such a rush for me. Like even though I'm working it there, you know, like I'm there as staff, I still get the same rush of just inspiration from all these creatives coming together at the same time different time zones we have this one guy from Egypt always comes to these oh, events <laughs> he's nice. at like 3 a.m <laughs> that's dedication <laughs> it is it is and we just have fun it's a lot of fun so yeah I, I hope that more people check it out watercolorlive.com and um yeah I mean you, you won't regret it people love it and we've done it for plein air painting mm -hmm. as well for plein air painters which is painting outdoors for those mm -hmm. who don't know and then we did a realism live event, which is for, it was a lot of uh, figurative art, um, portrait painting, things like that, more yeah. of the like tight rendering. Um, and there's a lot of fun. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to tell folks about that. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, and, you know, it comes back to, we used to travel to these conventions and we used to have a lot of people there. I, I mean, I, um, back when Interweave <laughs> was, was out there and they did weekend with the masters out in San Diego. I actually broadcast live from there and, you know, we had people dropping in and um, then I broadcast live from track and then I presented at track last year. Yeah. 2019. I had to think about that for a minute. Yeah. 2019, I presented a paper there. Um, and I, that was like the last, well, no, I think you guys did play. I think you did pace. Did you do pace in 2019? Yeah. We yeah. Did in 2019. So, I think that or the one, I guess it's called FACE, mm -hmm. were probably the last conventions that were held because of the pandemic. And it's really kind of interesting as uh, Art Chat, uh, is, I kind of look at it as a historical record of what is going on. So previously I've interviewed um, master artists and we talked about certain things about painting. It was very art. Um, oil painting focused. Um, a lot of the master artists and Carolyn Anderson, Quan Ho, Scott Burdick, George Gallo, um, Joe McGurl, um, you know, I can go on and name them, but they were all on there. And I, I always looked at it as some point, a hundred years from now, we are going to be listened to and people are going to go, wow, it was really different back then. Or, you know, it was really interesting hearing Michael Harding talk about his oil paints a hundred years from now. And, and that was a product that, you know, artists were using, or, you know, this is how um, Quan painted, and this is how Joe painted, and this is how, you know, Kevin painted and, and all that. And so we got this audio recording of them talking about their processes and um, their projects and, and what interests them. And I always look at it as kind of, this is a historical record of that time because you know, one little clip comes out of Claude Monet painting and everybody goes nuts, right? <laughs> it's like, wow, oh, I love it. You know, so, but, you know, I, so I kind of started looking at art chat that way. And um, I guess I, one of the first interviews I did was, was with Michael Harding and he was in um, Man, uh, Massachusetts 
couldn't get home because it was part of the lockdown. One of the um, things that Michael said to me is you can edit this out, but are we going to talk about the pandemic? And I said, you know what? It's affecting every artist. So let's talk about it. So he talked about it a little bit and, and you know, how they were in lockdown and they couldn't get back to England to do some of the work that they needed to do at the, the factory. And so then I started thinking about, well, you know, how how does this pandemic, how is it really affecting a lot of artists? And I've been noticing at least over the last, I don't know, maybe four months, I'm seeing less and less art in my newsfeed. Um, bless Joe McGirl's heart. I see a lot of his stuff. He posts a lot of um, really wonderful paintings and I sit there and just gaze at them. But, um, you know, I, I tried to post my artwork and, you know, the, uh, the response to seeing that even if it's a work in progress, you know, I'll get over a hundred likes for something like that. And I was like, wow, there's, you know, there's a real need that people have to see beauty right now and uh, experience beauty. Because I think personally, it's just so hard to find at this point, you know, we're, we just get bombarded with the messages of the pandemic and um, it, it's just really, really heavy. It's just really, really heavy. So don't know if you have anything to add to that, Sherry. But. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, you know, that's been one of my, my motivating factors, I think, throughout this whole thing is trying to bring, bring beauty out, bring out peace where I can, bring out creativity. Yeah. Um, it's one of the reasons that I've I do just love my job so much what I do. I mean, and when I say my job, it's not just like my job, it's what I do in my life, mm -hmm. you know, like working as an editor for art publications, but also writing poetry mm -hmm. for people and also learning how to um, lead yoga classes and just do whatever I can 24 seven, just about to, to bring peace to myself and also to other people. Cause I think that when we start with ourselves, you know, it's easy for it to flow out, right. that kind of thing. Um, and there are definitely times when I just sit down and I watch Netflix, you know, <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong. <laughs> you see me looking away, right? I'm like, hey. yeah. <laughs> how many series have I got under my belt now? <laughs> you, know? Oh. you know, that's also inspiration, you know, I mean, we watched The Undoing and I'm, you know, Hollywood, if you're listening, turn your ears off for a minute, but, you know, and, and believe me, they're not. So, but the, the funny thing is if we watched The Undoing and the ending of The Undoing for me was not all that great. And I'll just like leave it at that because it's kind of a mystery thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then I got online and went on Twitter and um, Josh Mackowitz, who works on Dateline, is is tweeting about it. And then I think Ben, his brother, I think it was his brother, was tweeting about it too. And I was like cracking up laughing because what they were saying, I was right there with him. And then there was like a thousand comments of other people get, <laughs> commenting about, no, it was a great ending. And it was like, no, it really wasn't, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, if you haven't seen Undoing, it's, it's really, really good and just skip the last episode. <laughs> but, but now, I mean, it's it's just really kind of interesting because Netflix and well HBO or whoever, um, any of the series, if I'm down, you know, I've got to watch an episode of uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and, you know, and then go, because I need to laugh, you know, I just have to laugh at some point. I don't care how many times I've seen it, it still makes me laugh. And, um, you know, so I think it's kind of interesting because I don't want folks to think we've been talking heavily art um, in painting and things like that. But Sherry and I do write. Um, Sherry just actually uh, published a poetry book, I think it was your last book. And then you have uh, Girl on Fire, which was your first book. Um, and if I've said the title wrong, please correct it. <laughs> but I, I, rem I remember us working when you were working on that, just starting that book out and we had a couple lunches and talked about um, how to do this and, and all that stuff. I was like, Brett, Jerry, just write it. You know? <laughs> but you were a lot more, you've got a lot more connections in the writing side than I do. Um, and, and I think you were, you had some editors who were reading through it and um, I'm really the, I mean, you're self-published as well, but I'm really on the, okay, here it is. Boop. <laughs> it goes out to the universe. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but go ahead, talk about a little bit about your writing process. Yeah, you know, well, I was, I was really lucky that I just happened to be working for a major, a major publishing company 
when I began writing. And it's not that, you know, like when I say publishing company, it wasn't like Random House, right? right. So like FNW published niche magazines and books and things like that. And what I was writing didn't fit in any of the, you know, thousand of categories <laughs> <laughs> that they had. But I, I had friends and mentors there that really helped me along the way. Um, our friend, Jamie Markle, who was the publisher um, at FNW for a long time, um, he was a great mentor to me and still is. Like, he's still my friend. And I, I know that I have friends like that that I can contact that that know the answers to the questions that I have mm -hmm. and also believe in me, you know, like we work together, right? So like they know me, they know my style. And um, and so it really helped just to have those people. That said, you don't have to work for a publisher to, you know, to yeah. learn how to write a book. Like anybody can do it. Um, I just happened to have friends that were right there that I could talk to about it more easily. And, but that also comes back to the community aspect. Like Absolutely. it doesn't have to be someone that you share a cube wall with or an office wall with. It can be someone on Facebook, for example, mm -hmm. or in a Zoom meeting who, um, who can just really be there and answer the questions that Google does not really answer very easily. Right, right. Basically like you can Google anything, but sometimes you just need to talk to somebody and just talk through the issues that you're having. Um, so that really helped with Girl on Fire. Mm -hmm. And, um, and of course, our one of the sister um, groups that that I worked for was Writers Digest. Mm -hmm. And so I had friends from Writers Digest that I could talk to about these things. And I, I'm a subscriber to that today. And <laughs> I'm still friends with the folks that work there. But that's a great re resource as well still. And um, yeah, so you know, so, if it's in you, if it's in you to create something, you find a way to do it. Yeah, pretty much. As, as I heard, creatives are always very resourceful on on how figuring out how to do things. Um, yeah. Sometimes the confidence may not be there. Uh, I, I'm teaching um, some new students in my studio here in Asheville, and it's really kind of interesting because uh, they'll be painting, and it, it's almost like they're afraid of the canvas. You know, they're afraid of putting that paint down. Um, it, and it was really interesting as, um, you know, I walk up and I just start, you do it this way. You know? <laughs> so, and, and then you sit there and go, how do you do that? And it's like, well, a lot of it's confidence. I mean, after the years of teaching people, um, you really start to see when someone becomes more confident and how they approach the canvas and they start, I mean, you could tell them till you're blue in the face. No, no, you want to, you want to attack the canvas and they sit there and look at you like, I don't want to attack anything, you know? <laughs> so you got to kind of build that confidence a little bit at a time. And I just, you know, stand back and say, it'll come. Don't worry. It'll come. You're not going to do anything wrong. Oils are so forgiving. You know, we just scrape it off. It's not a big deal. And, you know, so they get used to the fact that scraping is a part of the creation. Um, you know, take it back down to, to nothing and then build it back up. So it's really kind of interesting to see that. And, and that's what I think a lot of times when you create an isolation, um, you start questioning yourself and the confidence may waver a little bit, or you may just be, you know, a lot of things that I see and a lot of other painters, when they get to that point, it's just like, well, it doesn't have to go anywhere. It can stay in my studio forever and I can just experiment, you know, I can just play. And there's that whole dynamic that goes on with that. Um, if you're just beginning, it's, it's more of confidence. Am I doing it right? Which I basically direct you to the, to the art chat that I had with Carolyn Anderson called the myths and realities of creating a painting. And the first, you know, so I throw a rule out that, you know, somebody told me this was the rule I throw that out to Carolyn and Carolyn says, well, the first rule is there are no rules. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> you know? well, end of, end, end of podcast, let's go on. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it, it was, um, it, I mean, it was a good, you know, aha moment for me that this really, there are no rules, mm -hmm. you know, just be creative. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You have to, or there, there's also the saying that know the, know, know the quote unquote rules. Right. and then break them and There's then break that. them yes but you know i also want to come back to where you you were saying that you can just like scrape away the oil paint mm -hmm. and 
I like I see so many similarities between painting and writing. And oh yeah, all creative endeavors. Filming. And when you said that it just it made me think of like my novel draft right now that I am literally scraping away one sentence at a time, one paragraph at a time, and rewriting it to make it better. You know, and that's I think that we just have to embrace that that's part of the process that you have to get through that fear that yeah. we all experience at some point like oh what do I write what do I what do I paint what do I draw like I don't want to mess it up right and the fact is like we're gonna mess it up and then we can fix it you know yeah, yeah my favorite time in writing is what I call the free write where I don't worry about grammar um, I don't really worry about plot and timeline it's just I just open up word and start typing the first things that come to my mind of course that makes editing so much more fun not <laughs> but uh but yeah it's um you know and and that's the funny part is is I enjoy the free write so much I keep going maybe I should just make this a blog <laughs> you know instead of instead of trying to make it a published book just put it out there for everyone to see because I just love sitting down and writing and thank god for Grammarly it just comes back and says no this is a crappy sentence rewrite it you know <laughs> so um you know it, it's just it, it's kind of funny that way that and it's the same way sometimes even with painting. It's just, let's just put this color here and see if it works. In dance, what happens if I add this step or that step or, you know, change the pace and the tempo here a little bit? So you, they're, they're all, and I think George Gallo talks about it, and hopefully I'll get George on after the holidays, but because he's been doing a lot of filming. And, and I asked him once and I, I texted him and I said, I question when you're filming, what's it like, you know, and when you're directing and um, cause he also writes too, he writes screenplays and stuff. So we've had this discussion about writing and um, it's a wonderful support system that you can talk to them. But I, yeah, I had asked George, I said, so when you're, you know, filming and you got the actors in front of you and, and all of that, you know, do you see it kind of like a painting? And, and he does, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm directing where I have my star on the stage and, you know, I'm telling him how I want him to react. So you can translate all of that into the canvas, their palette of stars of being the color and where you're placing your star is, you know, the whole composition of the, the painting itself. So we had a wonderful text back and forth. And then he said, I'm tired of typing and called me. <laughs> and we had a, a whole conversation about how that parallels. And, and it was really kind of interesting because I think the, the shoot was going, was kind of um, lingering on and, you know, and he was getting kind of tired and he hung up and he says, thanks for this. Now I'm really enthused, you know? So he goes, he goes walking out. Of course, I was like, going, wow, I, I inspired a director, <laughs> you know, made my day. So <laughs> it was fun. So yeah, so it's, that's what I always come back to with the art chat community is that it, you know, I have ways of trying to motivate, motivate, my, mm, motivate myself, excuse me, by talking to certain people and who are friends and, and you know, I just, I just kept wondering, what if there's somebody out there who doesn't have that kind of support system mm -hmm. and, you know, how can we help them? How can you and I help them to, to uh, be more motivated, be more inspired, uh, talk about um, what it is that's stopping them, for example, from being creative? Um, you know, we're not, I don't want to say that we're the, you know, the therapist more or less, but hopefully we're the, the inspiration that gets you to pick up your brushes again or put on some music and dance and, or, you know, start typing, open up Word and start typing a, a book. Um, you, you know, it's, a thought just came into my head, Sherry. Um, interestingly enough, a lot of artists um, won't write. Let's just say that, you know, some will do blogs or write something on Facebook or things like that, but they don't consider that like professional writing per se. Uh, but wouldn't it be interesting if every one of us creatives just in a separate thing that would possibly like a journal would never talk about our journey. Capture that. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, I think that's a great idea. Because it's something that can be, that's part of your documentation too. And I would think that your family and, and your collectors and anyone who's been involved in that would be interested yeah. in seeing that. And I know there's a lot of people that will go, well, who would be interested in my process? But 
as a as a teacher, as an instructor, and I'm sure as someone that interviews um, other artists and writers and and things, um, I have to quit moving. I just got a my internet's unstable, <laughs> so you know that it would be interesting to kind of motivate people that way. Um, just and it doesn't have to be anything that would ever get published, but maybe for yourself. Um, you print it out and you keep it in your studio and you capture the things that motivate you the most in that, mm -hmm. in that journal. So I'm going to, yeah. yeah I, I'm think gonna, that, I do think that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, and it'll start you on that writing journey. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Good. Okay. Um, I journal a lot, especially since um, going into my yoga teacher training, that's been part of our homework every week <laughs> to journal in different ways. And I've always been a journaler anyway. <laughs> so I think that even if you're not a writer, and this is this has come up with my fellow students in that um, in that study, um, not study, but in that school, if you're even if you're not a writer to journal, if you just come up with like some prompts to or make a list or something maybe it's something you're grateful for maybe it's just something that you accomplished that day with your art whatever you're in by art i mean like as an all-encompassing word your create your creative project mm -hmm. what did you do you know did you learn something did you have a challenge and keeping that in your journal i think it, like looking back it can help you see how far you've come and i know for me it helps me see like the obstacles that I've overcome, you know, like mm -hmm. when I had periods where I didn't really want to write, for example, or work on something, I come back to that. And I think, oh, no, like, I made it through. I've done this before. I can do this again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, another journal that I keep, I don't, I don't have it with me. So I can't show it to you right now. But it's, <laughs> a, it's actually this beautiful handmade journal that someone had made for me. And um, I met her through the Streamline community and she was so sweet. She was like, I remember when she came up to me at, at Pace at the planner convention and she was like, I just feel like you're a kindred to me. Aww. And I was so touched. And she made this journal for me with, and she actually included like what is one of my spirit animals. Like she didn't know that, but like she drew a deer Aww. inside the journal and that's my inspiration journal. So what I do for that and what I would encourage other people to keep is a journal where you write down everything that does motivate you. So it has quotes that I really like. I've quoted artists from work and put it in there because I'm I have like probably once a week, I'm so moved by something that an artist says just that I see through my work that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Or that's so amazing. And, um, and I write those things down. And so if I just need a little bit of inspiration, I know I can come right to that journal right. and, and get it. And it's there for me. So I would encourage yeah. everybody to do that. Right. And imagine then just to bring it back to the art chat community, imagine posting that out to a group of artists, dancers, writers, creatives that, you know, then will respond to it and build upon it and motivate you to start being inspired and start creative and and maybe even build some confidence in you that you know you share that first clip of you dancing or that you know first paragraph of your your novel or your journal and and see how that responses because i think a lot of things that are happening right now um with the pandemic is we aren't we don't have the ability to share that emotional side. People can't see through a computer how happy you are when you read something. Um, and, and there are, I think there's a number of artists who are also just really struggling. And when I see artists, again, creatives that are really struggling opening, because I know I am, I'm struggling to open up my Word document and get back to editing book five. And it, you know, there in the back of my mind, I'm being told, you know, there's people who are waiting for this book and bless their hearts, they tell me every day on Facebook about, you know, I'm waiting for book five. <laughs> Heaven forbid if I post, I'm going to open book five today and get some editing done because when will it be ready is the next question. And I love my fans. Thank you so much for doing that. And, you know, I call them my peeps, but, you know, um, no, no big deal there. But, you know, it's just funny. It's like, I love that they're so committed to the story of Nicole, Sean, and um, Bobby Jenkins. And it's just, 
and, and I always get a kick out of how everybody responds to the politician now president you know, in that series. It just cracks me up. So, um, you know, and it feels good. I mean, I'm sitting here smiling. I feel good that these people are, you know, impressed and really are interested in what happens to them next. And, and you know, and then I, I open that up and the weight of the world comes back. And so part of that motivation, I, you know, it, I, I, that's, that to me was the inspiration for the developing the community. And like I said, it's not just, I'm not just looking at wanting artists or oil painters or watercolorists or whatever to join. I mean, we, we want to reach out beyond that. Hopefully we can encourage those that are painting at this point to maybe do something a bit different because like I said, the watercolor markers have gotten me back up in my studio and it's probably nothing that I'll ever show anybody. Um, but it's something that allows my creativity to come out without any pressure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I guess it, it's, I think it's a little bit different for you, Sherry, because you, <laughs> you have your 40 hour a week job of talking with creatives. And then you have this creative life that you're doing on the side. So how do you balance that? Has it, has it affected you even on the 40 hour a week job? You mean um, like the pandemic? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely isolation. Has, like, yeah. Uh, well, so, so it's sort of two different things. Like isolation has not necessarily because I've worked remotely since I started for streamline and actually before I started with streamline, I was freelancing just at various, for various magazines and different things like that. Right. And doing right. Like just, you know, random gigs, but, um, you know, our main office is based in Florida and I live in Kentucky. So it's, you know, I just automatically work from home and I love that. Like, I've always loved that. Mm -hmm. Even when I worked at F&W, um, I was able to work from home a few days a week because the office was so far. Right. Um, but I just, I, I love it. I love being alone. Like, and I need to be alone. <laughs> like I've learned that about myself over the years. Like, I have to have time where I'm just by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if it's because I'm a little bit of a secret introvert, you know, which might surprise people, but I just need that time. So as far as working in that way, no, it hasn't really changed anything. Um, but emotionally, the pandemic as a whole has like, that's been a challenge, you know? I mean, when it first happened, I still had my deadlines. And I still had to come up with content, even though everything around us was changing, including the art world, as we mm -hmm. all know. Yes. Uh, you know, people can have their art shows, galleries couldn't be open, museums even, you know, closed. And so it was just at the same time, <clears throat> all that was happening. I still wasn't sure how I was going to get water for my family because we live on a cistern. And I would always buy, excuse me, I would always buy our water from the store. And all of a sudden I couldn't just buy eight gallons of water like I normally do, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like, no, you get two. I'm like, okay, cool. That's gonna last me like one day. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it was just a matter of being like, okay, like get the water for my family and then work on my deadlines, you know? And it, that was a challenge, but you just, I just kind of kept going and maybe in a way it, it saved me. Like it kept, it kept, it kept me from like freaking out mm -hmm. during most of this because I was like, well, I still have to get my work done no matter what, you know, I, I've got a job to do. And fortunately it was a job that is not stressful that I do love and is very positive. So mm -hmm. there was all of that and it's also incredibly flexible, you know, so like the way that my work is um, it's not like a normal, like you have to be on the computer from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and you get a half hour break. Like, it's not like that at all. You know, I just mm -hmm. kind of work on my own pace. I get the work done and I sort of work all the time, but it's because it's just such a part of my life and mm -hmm. I love it. So it's like, okay. But um, yeah, so that's, I think that was the, the biggest way that the pandemic has affected me is just so, like mentally still trying to like keep things going even when I feel, you know, and like everybody does, I feel like sometimes I just feel like the collective suffering mm -hmm. of everyone. And even though like personally, like we're doing okay, like my family has been okay through all of this. Um, God bless Eric for keeping the business going and coming up with some brilliant ideas to keep yeah. us afloat. So I've been able to work 
throughout all of this. And my husband's been able to work and my family has been healthy. So all that said and done, you know, we've been, we've been really blessed and I'm really grateful for all of that. And, um, and grateful that I've had something to keep my mind busy so that I don't go down any, you know, rabbit holes and (laughs) stuff like that. So that's how it's affected me personally. Yeah. It's, um, we act, we moved from Middletown, Ohio to Asheville, North Carolina, uh, in been here a year. I have to do the math. <laughs> been here a year. Um, so in August of yeah, August of 2019. So and then we got into this flow of meeting people and um, because you know I my whole network is some of it is online and that hasn't changed. Um, but and I do have um, friends like all over the country and and some internationally and so that hasn't because it's always been you know, emails and, you know, what, well, before Zoom, what go to meeting calls and, and things like that. Um, so that, that really hasn't changed. But the interesting thing was, is, you know, we, we found friends, we would be entertaining or having parties, you know, with our new friends or going out hiking with our new friends. And then all of a sudden, boom, all of that's changed. And it was really kind of funny yesterday. I, I was teaching a, a student in my studio and um, my husband went out for a walk in our neighborhood and he ran into so many people. It really wasn't an aerobic walk. <laughs> it was, and mind you, I live on the side of a mountain. So um, when we walk, you go from, you, you, you can climb about, I think it's 900 feet in elevation um, while we're hiking. So, you know, you really do get a, a workout when you just walk the neighborhood here. But it was funny because he says, I think people are so tired of not socializing, of all, you know, being in the house and being isolated that, you know, when they see somebody outside, they may be standing 20 feet away but are, you know, and, and have their mask on outside or not have their mask on. That's why they're standing 20 feet away and just talking. So typically what would take about, you know, maybe an hour and 10 minute walk. I think he was gone for maybe two hours. <laughs> So, so, you know, it, it, and, and that's why I think the Art Chat community is, is at the right time to launch because I think people are looking at the long winter ahead and saying, I need, I need something to inspire me and, and um, motivate me. And, and I, 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 Sherry knows me. I, I try, other than when I'm writing, I try not to use negative words too much. Um, so like, you know, I told her, I said, accountability is probably one of my worst words. I don't like that one because that really makes me feel like I'm under a deadline or pressure and, you know, all of that that comes with it. And procrastination is another word, and I'm good at that. So I am good at something. I'm good at procrastinating. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, those two words are like the two that I, I want to get rid of. But I really think that, and, and I'm going to let Sherry talk about what her um, ideas and 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 what she wants to happen with the art community, art chat community as well. Um, and the only reason why I called it, by the way, art chat community is because art chat is basically a brand at this point. And I'm reaching out to you, my listeners and, and friends of Sherry and Sherry's supporters and um, artists and dancers and yoga people, <laughs> and, you know, and inviting everybody in. So um but yeah, the, you know, the whole reason why I wanted to start this art chat community was because I wanted to give people a safe place to tell us about their struggle, if they want to do that, um, their work, how we can inspire them to motivate them to, to bring you into this conversation in a very safe place. Um, so, and that's, like I said, this private closed Facebook group. And you're going to need to um, get in touch with either Sherry and Sherry, I'm saying you because of your following on Facebook, Um, Sherry can then forward to me because Sherry's got a full-time job. My full-time job is basically this stuff. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So um, I'll have time to add you to the group. Um, And I'm going to give Sherry an opportunity to talk about what she sees as her role in this. And I'm really, I'm really, really happy to have you as a uh, co host now for, um, I have to do some, some 
changes on the artwork, but that's fun part. So <laughs> to get your name on there too. Um, so yeah, so welcome to Art Chat and the Art Chat community. And Sherry is going to basically be holding, uh, well, I'm not gonna say it this way, I'm gonna say Sherry is gonna be, we're gonna motivate each other and inspire each other with this group. Um, that's our commitment to one another. See, no negative words. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're, you know, really would like to see this fly and we really would like to invite everyone who is listening to this that um, would like to be a part of it. Uh, and like, again, at the Facebook free, the base Facebook group is free. There's no charge. Um, we want you to join. We want you to have a safe environment to um tell us about your struggle, tell us about your work, tell us about what it is that you would like to do, but maybe need a little prompting to get off the ground with. So Sherry, put your spin on Art Chat community and tell us what, what you'd like to see it become. Yeah, well, I, you know, all of that, definitely. Um, and I think one thing I would just like to add is that I think it's okay to share what your challenges are and what you're struggling with, mm -hmm. like on a specific piece or whatever, because it, it helps other people see that they're not alone. Right. And that's one of the reasons that I, like, I'm okay being very transparent, like on my blog, you know, like I, mm -hmm. I wrote a blog post about how I threw a rock one day because I was so angry. <laughs> 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 if anybody knows me at all, they're going to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I hurled it. But, you know, it's just because I, just think it's important for us to remember that we're all just very human mm -hmm. and you know i like to share my artistic creative struggles because i know that i'm not alone right. and i know that i'm al not alone because people before me have shared their struggles and i've seen myself in them and so that's why i think it's it's good to just connect with other creatives and you know if there is anything that I want to be known about me, it would be that I believe that self-expression is so important. Absolutely. And I think that lives are better when we can find a way to express ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's why I'm really excited to be a part of this. Yeah. And I'm, I'm stoked to be a part of your podcast and this Facebook group. I'm really excited to meet more people online and just connect with people and just create like a positive environment. Like you said, like, you know, yeah, like ask for input if you need it, you know, but don't expect to get anything negative. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all just to, we all just want to help each other get through all of this. Right. And part of joining the face, I just thought about this. Um, I keep, I keep making the assumption that people have projects that they're excited about and then they may even just be at the point where they're struggling to, to do something okay so what do you think i'm going to put sherry on the spot here and i apologize for that but um what do you think about putting together some challenges okay so when i say challenges it's just like exercises let's use that as a better word where um there's no judging uh there's you know, no prize or reward. So there's no pressure. And we just put out there, okay, so let's, we're going to, and I'm going to fall back onto oil painting at this point, because that's where I have the most of those created. Um, I want you to pick up your pen, your, um, your pen, your, your brush, whatever. And, and Sherry and I can definitely come up for some dance and writing and um, other things too. But pick up your brush and we're going to do an S composition painting and uh, you're only allowed to use XYZ palette. Go and share it when you're done. You know, just a fun thing. Okay. Yeah. Make it up in your mind. Use your imagination. You don't have to use a reference. Don't go through all your photographs. You know what the composition is. I'll post a picture of an S composition, for example, and you know, do that. Now we can build on that really easily, right? Because an S composition could be a path. So writers, I want you to write a story about walking down that path. Okay. Dancers, I want you 
to talk about the dance you would do. Don't do Yellow Brick Road, okay? <laughs> let's, get, <laughs> let's get really excited about this. Maybe you go off the path and what's over there, you know? So, you know, we'll put out just some things like this and try and motivate you to think a little bit in a different way. So let's say you're an artist and you want to start playing with writing. So write about that journey that you're taking along that S path composition of a, a painting. Um, all the things like that. So that's the kind of thing that I'm looking at trying to do in this community. Whether or not you participate in that particular challenge is up to you. If you want to stay focused on on what you're working on, that's absolutely okay as well. And, you know, I'm sure we'll get a lot of com conversation about everything that hopefully we post <laughs> in, in the group. So um, again, if you want to join the Facebook group, you're going to have to a join Facebook if you're not on it. Um, that's pretty painless. Uh, and then you're going to have to send Sherry Don Haas or Linda Riesenberg Fissler um, and the message. And, um, we, and we can bring you into the group because I said, like I said, it's private and it's closed. So this will only appear in your news feed if you're a member of the group. Okay. It will not appear in anybody else's news feed. So very different than when you post something from your to the public group. This is a very private group. So it's only go to the people who are members of the group um, and it's free. And that's option one of the art chat community. And then our option two of the art chat community is if you're looking for um, more interaction, we'll have a Zoom call um, with you know five to 10 participants. And uh, there's a little bit of a charge there to help cover for Zoom and also to hold you um, in that motivation sphere because money always motivates. <laughs> it does. I mean, let's just kind of be honest. Um, it keeps us, there's that A word, accountable again. But um, yeah, so it's just a little bit of a charge to uh, help cover Zoom, basically. And then um, we can have conversations about the struggles, just kind of like what Sherry and I did today, where we just kind of talk about the struggles and what you're struggling with and how we might, uh, you know, motivate you. Now, to be clear, Sherry will not be on that Zoom call. Um, that'll be with me. And um, we, you know, I look forward to meeting anyone who might need that little extra push and a um, little extra inspiration and um, looking forward to having some conversations with that. So what do you think about the challenge idea, Sherry? I love it. I'm a big fan of prompts mm -hmm. and challenges. And I have- Prompts I have is a, a good whole, word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a whole shelf of books just dedicated to creativity and creative ideas and brainstorming and things like that. So um, yeah, but I, it's so easy. It'd be so easy for me to, to share a prompt and- and for us to do that together, maybe like once a month, just say, hey, here's the prompt and here's how it could apply to different um, creative endeavors. And then just have some fun with it. You right. know, just if, if somebody needs that little boost, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's a little extra that's that's going into the, the Facebook group. So, um, so again, if you go out to my website, www.linda, L-I-N-D-A, Fissler, F is in Frank, I, S is in Sam, L-E-R, Dot com, you'll see a little um, blog, if you will, that talks about the new Art Chat community. Um, and there is a link down at the bottom to my email. And you can just click on that and send me a note with your Facebook handle, and I can get you started in the Facebook group. Um, Sherry, I don't have a problem either uh, going out and inviting people that you know would be interested. Um, I'll probably be doing the same. Uh, we've got some really interesting folks that are kind of the basis of the art chat community. Sherry is the, one of them. I'm one of them. We have Joanna Pang Atkins, who is Dick Atkins, who was it's her, his wife. And Dick is um, the producer that I've interviewed before on Art Chat, talking about producing a movie and how different that is. And um, James Van Fossen, who is an artist um, out in Colorado, and his wife, Leanne, who is also an artist, uh, is a part of the group. Um, if you know James's work, um, he's, you know, he's, he's a representational artist is basically the best way that I can um, define him because he does paint 
from anything from classical realism all the way up to, you know, landscapes and plain air and, and things like that. And then Leanne is, is an art teacher in Colorado, his wife, um, they have two children. They just, um, I think Sawyer is coming up on, uh, well, I think he's just over a year and then she, they have a daughter as well. And uh, so they're a little bit busy, but they're a part of the group and um, they'll, they'll be posting things as well. Um, and Sherry, and I think that's it. I invited, um, I got, I need to have a conversation with Gabrielle DeCure and Stefan Rinicki who read audiobooks so that we can get somebody who talks about visual storytelling in the group. So I need to have a conversation with Gabrielle and uh, Stefan and um, pull them in because they're probably looking at me like, what are you doing with this? So, <laughs> so I need to send them a, a separate note. Um, and like I said, you know, we'll be growing this as well, as much as we can, but that's basically uh, the folks that I've gotten a loose commitment with uh, to be a part of the group at this point and kind of help uh, talk about the different areas that they're working on and projects that they're, uh, they are doing. Um, I guess that pretty much, I think, sums it up, Sherry. Um, I think we did a, a good job of launching the community. Um, what do you think? I think so, too. Thanks again for, for doing all of this. I think it's going to impact a lot of people's lives and but, bring a lot of good into the world. Yeah, I hope so. And um, to the listeners out there, we hope to see you in Facebook and uh, in the group. And uh, basically, we'll uh, call this one closed. And then Sherry and I will get to work on what the next one in January, what our next podcast will be in January. So lots of emails will be going back and forth between Sherry and I, which is okay, because we're used to that <laughs> when we actually when I live back in Ohio and such. Um, so yeah, so thanks for tuning in. And Sherry, any goodbyes or wishes? Um, no, I just, I hope everybody has a great day and thanks to everybody who's listening. Yeah. So, and uh, have a happy holiday season and, um, you know, just start thinking about what you want to happen in 2021. And then uh, we can share that in the Facebook group. So again, L Fissler at lindafissler.com. I'll put that up on, uh, I'll put it in the show notes and I'll put it up on the screen uh, for my YouTube folks and my um my audio listening folks. So everybody have a great day. Thanks so much for listening and uh, we will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.